Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road, and it's Friday. So that means but one thing. It's time for the Friday Mailbag, <laughs> where we take your questions. I can uh, clearly tell Kevin wasn't expecting that little sound effect there. Where I was we not take expecting your the questions, early in the morning. <laughs> your comments, your concerns, and you know what? We turn them into a podcast episode, uh, complete with sound effects. <laughs> so, oh, uh, you know what? Let's just oh, let's just man. get into the episode so we can. I I just need a laughter reset. Let's let's jump into this episode, right? When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, We probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, we are back, and we are ready to get this episode going. Um, We're going to take a little bit... Not really a different format today, but we're going to kind of take on some of the haters today, I think. We found some great questions, yeah. slash comments, whatever, and uh, I think some people out there in the uh, YouTubes and Facebook lands are drinking a little bit of that uh, little bit of that haterade. I don't know what flavor it was, but it's going to make for some great content. So we said, you know what? Let's make an episode out of nothing but YouTube comments that were not like honest general questions like, not 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 the we love you guys so much can you answer my question but the at least one of them i know is like you guys are pretty much dumb and don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna make it an episode so yeah i we, we clearly have no clue looking what forward we're, to it. we're this doing is gonna here. be this is gonna be fun yeah um, this is i'm actually fun. just kind of so excited that we're pulling say, all um, of our i was just i was i'm just excited we're pulling all of all our of questions them. directly from youtube yep. this time so this is awesome all of them yep all of them all of them we got a little theme going here i think this is going to be a fun one um we don't try not to take too much of you guys time as as is our normal friday the mailbag or the special episodes usually a little shorter episode so we'll try to we'll try to stay true to that today but let's uh let's jump right into it and see what we can what we can get ourselves into and hopefully uh i know we talked about it I, if we haven't already i definitely want to make sure that we're going to link this video as a response to these comments on the youtube videos so at least at least the haters know that, that that we answered them and that we took time out of our day and our schedule to show them a little dirt to dust love because I think that's what the world yeah needs of more. course yeah of course uh, so the first two questions that we're gonna dive into um, are uh, your favorite topic ever uh, and you could have guessed that we could have got some hate from the uh, the steering stabilizer video um, they are steering stabilizer oh, related. Yeah um they kind of yeah. tie into each other so I'm i gonna think fire i started that both. video saying yeah didn't i didn't i start that video yeah. by saying i know some people are gonna hate this and i'm probably gonna get some hate for it so <laughs> I, I, you know what it's not y'all's fault yeah. it's mine i brought this on myself this is my fault yeah, yeah. um all right give it to me give me the so hate yeah, i'm gonna fire off i'm gonna fire off both these questions because they kind of go in line with each other one's just way longer than the other uh, the first one is, uh, you never <laughs> okay. said, you said never put dual stabilizers on, but you didn't give any specific reasons why. Then the other one was in the same video, uh, said you provided no hard evidence other than you saying you don't, they don't do anything. seems like they work well for many people. So if, even if all they do is reduce wear and tear and extend the life of your steering joints, why are they bad? Seems like your evidence is pretty subjective. Even if they just help dampen steering, how is that bad? Uh, yeah, I mean, this whole freaking podcast is subjective. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, so let's I mean, break it down. Just, uh, yeah. You know, I love all of you. Let me just, I love, I love our listeners. I love our listeners. Um, so the first question was that basically I said, that you should never run dual steering stabilizers. They were pointless. And I, I didn't say 
unequivocally, you should never run dual steering stabilizers. Um, so let me go ahead and say that now. Yeah, you should never run dual stabilizers. It's pointless. <laughs> it's just your own. The only reason that somebody would ever need to run a dual steering stabilizer is because you bought the first one that was crap and it's pulling. And now you're having to put an opposing steering stabilizer on there to equal out the force. The only other reason somebody runs a dual steering stabilizer is aesthetics. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason you're running a dual steering stabilizer. So if you want to do it, like, go for it. If you want to spend the money and you know what you're doing, it's like I say with reservoir shocks. Like, 99% of people don't need them. You only need reservoir shocks in two cases. Number one, you're doing high-speed stuff that you can use the extra fluid capacity to keep the shock cool. Number two, you have the money and you want to pay for badass factor. Like, that's it. Like, there's no other use for low speed rock crawling at your local trails. You don't need resis. Um, so 99% of people don't. Now, I say that having reservoir shocks on, like, every Jeep that I own and have ever owned. So I get that. Now, some of that is because, you know, on the Gladiator, it was 100% for show. That was, there was no reason I needed a three-inch reservoir CD facet. I didn't need that. I did it because it looked cool, and it was a little bit of a show vehicle, so I did it. So stabilizers, dual steering stabilizers for sure, do they actually do anything functional? No, absolutely not. If, if you've got one steering stabilizer, which a lot of vehicles, a lot of solid axle vehicles come with steering stabilizers or, or steering dampeners, and you get these kits that mount these brackets on the axle, and then you get the opposing steering stabilizers, that's for looks. Like the kits that come that way, that's for looks. Like you're doing it for looks and that's fine if you want to do it that way. But, and that is subjective. Objectively, there's zero to tell me they do anything other than make it even harder to steer. Like your increased steering effort. Now, if you like increased steering effort, fine, but that's subjective. There's nothing objective about what steering effort you like. Objectively, the only reason for a dual steering stabilizer is to counteract the force of the bad one you bought in the first place that wasn't neutral. So now you've got a pull or a push, and you've got to put another one on there to oppose the pull or the push. You know, if one's pulling, one's pushing, they're working against each other. You are literally making steering stabilizers work against each other to, earing, to even out your steering. So objectively, that makes no sense. Subjectively, it might look cool. So, yeah, dual steering stabilizers, completely and totally worthless, um, unless from a subjective standpoint you just like the look or you like the feel of increased Steering effort, um, you know, they like to be objective and subjective. Objective basically mean that's my opinion. Subjective basically mean based in fact. For those of you who don't remember high school, whatever class the hell that was taught in, I don't think I remember. Um, and then the other one was that I, there was a part in one of the videos that we did where I said that if your vehicle is built correctly, you don't need a steering stabilizer. So I think that's what he's taking issue with. And he's taking it to mean that I just think that steering stabilizers are, are completely useless. Um, I've actually said quite the opposite of that in m even more recent videos where we talked about, we had a steering stabilizer question. We talked about the steering tier smarts one that was HD HD in the neutral one. We've talked about steering stabilizers in a somewhat positive light. I, I you know, uh, the, uh, the death wobble episode where I actually admitted that steering stabilizers can cause death wobble. That was only a couple, couple <laughs> episodes ago. Yeah. So they're not completely that useless, too far along. right? They're, they're not no. like, mm -mm they do dampen steering. They do have an effect. As long as you get one to reference my last answer, that's not completely and totally cheap or built like a shock that is going to not push and pull. And when I say push and pull, I mean the shaft goes in and out of the body. It doesn't go even. The chambers aren't even in pressure, which is generally a shock, you know, compression. Yeah, and pressure is done. And they're not side. symmetrical. Yeah. It's pressurized on one side. Correct. So it's going to generally push more. You're going to get a push or a pull left or right depending on how that thing's oriented. Uh, I think most of them are oriented shaft to the middle, but some, I think I did one where I flipped it, and it was shaft to the outside, whatever. And you can do that, it's fine, whatever. But if you've got a neutral one, all that should do is it should be symmetrical, top and bottom, or left and right chambers, whatever you want to call it, however you oriented the, however you orient it. And, and then it's fine. And it can dampen steering. It absolutely can. Um, I do understand the people that, again, if it's built right, you don't need one you don't put a steering stabilizer on it and it feels kind of, I guess a little loose, maybe I guess would be the, would, you know, you're not wobble death wobbling or anything, but it is loose and they kind of like the increased steering effort from the stabilizer. Uh, yeah. I can get that. I can totally get I that. Get that I mean, I've got a stabilizer on the four by E. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, and I have one on the four by E it's just the King to match the shocks. I mean, that's, that's why I did it. 
that was literally the only reason I picked it. Um, and it doesn't matter. I mean, I could have gone, just got back from Moab. The Jeep's not even back yet. I could have done Moab without it. Um, but I like the look of it. I like the on-road. I'd actually prefer not to have it off-road. Um, and that one will get, that one will get PSC anyway. Um, but the PSC still acts like a steering stabilizer to a certain amount. But uh, I've done Moab in Reaper years ago, an entire EJS without a steering stabilizer. I had no problems other than I wish I had PSC because it had 40s. Um, I just got back from doing it again. You know, so I can definitely see the need or the desire for, I'm not going to say a need. You don't absolutely, you never need, air quotations, a steering stabilizer. Um, you also don't need 40s. Like, you don't. <laughs> exactly. Does it make wheeling easier? Yeah. Absolutely it does. You don't need uh, bead locks. Does it make airing down to 8 PSI easier and more reliable? You're not going to you know, blow up? Absolutely. You don't need – there's a lot of things in the off-road world. The off-road world is not a thing of needs. It is a thing of wants and function-based improvements, sometimes not all function. We do live in the world of ducks uh, and all the RGB lights. So sometimes it's not – sometimes it is form over function. And, and in some ways, that's what a steering stabilizer is to me. It's form over function. Unless you just like the increased steering feel, if you come from, say, a vehicle that was rack and pinion, and you got that increased steering feel over solid axle, solid axle feels completely different than rack and pinion. So I can see getting that to get that feel to where you're more comfortable driving the car, but don't confuse that with a need. That's a want. That's a desire. Um, so you know, again, I'll say if the vehicle's built right, you can take it off. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a steering stabilizer. But I'm just saying, understand what it is. I think that's more of that. More of it is just be educated on what it is, and don't look at it as a kind of a catch-all for everything. Um, and I still say dual steering stabilizers are pointless. So I will. He's not going to like that answer, but yeah, I'm going to I'm going to hold on to that one too. I, I do think they're pointless. Um, now I do I do want to say that if you feel like you need a steering stabilizer or you feel that a steering stabilizer helps in any way. I mean, go for it. Do it. it. Um, if you really want to spend the money Absolutely. and look even cooler than a dual stabilizer, then uh, go pass through. If you're gonna if you're gonna spend the money, spend the real money. Uh, come on. <laughs> and I've done. Uh, now, yeah, to be fair, it, I've done all of those things. I've done the oh, single yeah. stabilizer. I've done the PSC. I had a uh, way way back. I had a King Ranch F two fifty, and I put BDS on it, and I had Fox shocks on it. Like there were the two O Resi shocks. And I did the dual steering stabilizer. Now, I did it because I wanted it to look a certain way. I didn't do it. I ended up taking it off later, but it looked cool. Um, so I've done that. So I've done, and I've done the pass-through. I had a pass-through on the Gladiator. I had a Fox factory because it matched the shocks. So it's very, for me, when I've done steering stabilizers, it's, it's 15 to 20% steering feel, and it's been 80 to 85%. I want it to complete a look of the build and I'm and I can yeah, be honest about absolutely. that. I didn't do it for any, yeah. I definitely didn't do it for any functional purposes. It was all form, not function. I can be a hundred percent honest about that. And, and that's fine. Like I've done it. I'm not going to hate on anybody else for doing it. Just know that it's not like, don't come on YouTube and be like, yo bro, dual steering stabilizers are, you got to have it. You need it. No, you don't just know what you're buying, know why you're buying it. And it's totally cool. It's your rig, your money. Um, just know why you're doing it and don't assume that you need it just because some Facebook group told you or you want to justify spending $500 on a dual steering stabilizer setup. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm curious about? I wonder if, because, you know, a lot of what we do aesthetically is emulated from other things, right? People see something that looks really cool <clears throat> and they go for it. Uh, case in point, the squatted trucks. When you had... um drag racing trucks or off-road trucks and they're they're just hauling ass the tails is scooted down the nose is up so people wanted to emulate that look even when they weren't going fast i wonder if the dual steering stabilizer was in an attempt to emulate a full hydro steering because uh, visually I you're getting gonna, some, some i'm gonna of that just same disagree look. with you that the squatted trucks came from watching race trucks those idiots ain't watching race <laughs> trucks let's be honest <laughs> Uh, probably okay. not. I don't, I don't know. I don't uh, know where it came from. Towing, yeah, I don't know. I I think maybe it came from some the trailer park boys not being able to get enough of their baby mama's tax returns 
and they thought maybe this year I'll lift the front and next year I'll lift the rear. Here we go. I, I don't know. It could have been that. Look, I do not care, but squatted truck guys, that is the dumbest off-road, quote-unquote, off-road trend I have ever seen. It is worse than ducks. There, there's nothing At least ducks don't that. mess with the safety. Yeah. Like, squatted trucks are unsafe. Like, let's just be, let's just call that what it is. It's completely and totally unsafe. Uh, it also looks like crap. And uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sick and tired of seeing the low cut. And I can say that living in, we live in North Carolina, so we were kind of the, 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 the cradle of civilization for the squatted truck movement, quote unquote. Um, I was just, I got really tired of seeing guys in Simply Southern or Vineyard Vine shirts rolling around with their khaki shorts and hey dudes with their, with their long flow, with their two loose. Like they all look the same, right? <laughs> um, you know, the striped Vineyard there Vine, they all look, look the same. There, yeah, Every time little... they get out of that truck, they all yeah. look the same, right? And they're all named Tyler. So I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> they are all... yeah, they are, it's just oh, dumb. It's absolutely stupid. So no, I absolutely unequivocally yeah. disagree that it came from something cool like watching race trucks. Even though you are right that sometimes okay. race trucks do get a little squatted in the rear because they're absolutely getting it through the desert. Um, no, squatted truck guys are just idiots, and they're not watching. They don't give a crap okay. about off road racing. That's but fair. that is my aesthetically they saw something that cool. I'll give you that part. I'll absolutely yeah, give you yeah, that. Yeah. Just not when it comes to squad of truck bros. <laughs> All right, moving right along squatted here. Squatted trucks. Leave um, it to you to get squatted truck the, <laughs> squatted trucks into a steering stabilizer episode. I Jeez. I actually want to do a whole episode on squatted trucks. So that is that is gonna come at some point. So just just you be want forty five minutes more, of what I just states. gave you? You want that? I'll I, I'll bring the yeah, smoke. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> no, more states are. are uh, for lack of better terms, outlawing it. Um, right. But, Kinda. you know, there's reasons behind it, and I would love to dig into the reasons behind that. Um, anyways, moving right along, this one's not so much of a, a hater comment. This is actually a pretty pretty cool comment that came through. Um, so thank you for the video. I've been watching a lot of them. I have geometry correction brackets for the control arms in the front to get my caster angle and pinion back to a proper angle. I don't have a vibration, but I'm looking at replacing all eight control arms. What do you recommend? This one's easy. Um, I mean, at least you did geo brackets. I mean, at least that lowers yeah. the mount point, so you're having you're not having bump handling issues. So if you're not gonna, I like geo geo brackets. Used to be the cheaper way to not replace arms. Um, I blame AEV for geometry correction brackets a lot. Uh, that was their thing because they kind of started. Um. You know, I think they were building a lot, and somebody from AEV can probably disagree, but the perception was that they were building for dealership stuff. You know, they did a lot of that in the JK, and they didn't want to have to sell a super expensive kit with arms and all that. It also made it easier for the technician to install, and it removed human element potential mess-ups by not having adjustable arms because you can measure one wrong by an eighth of an inch. Your cross caster's off. Crosser comes off if they're adjustable it allowed you to keep that fixed length of the arm, but move that mount point down because you've moved the axle further away from the frame. So I don't hate geometry correction brackets. Nowadays, they're just as expensive as doing the arms. So like, I'm more of a fan of just doing the arms because off-road, um, those geo brackets um, grow hands and reach out and grab rocks. On-road, I don't really have a preference. I don't care. There's just not a lot of kits anymore. That the Geometry brackets are kind of... I don't, I don't want to say it's a dying technology, but it's just not something for the money. It's just not – It's it, you're not going to really save that much money unless it just comes with the kit that you buy. Um, if you're going to go all eight arms, good on you. Uh, proud of you. Good job. Um, I would say it really depends on what you're going to do, and I'll use – I'll kind of use rock crawler and metal cloak examples. Um so on the on the metal cloak side, which Rock Crawler does too, the adventure series from Rock Crawler and then the regular metal cloak kind of play to that same market. That's why they're such competitors to each other, in that they are a uh, a, a quote unquote maintenance free joint. I think the Rock Crawler beats the metal cloak a little bit on articulation, so misalignment. So if you're going to go off road, I would tend I would tend more towards the Rock Crawler stuff on the Adventure X if you want to go service free. Um, it's going to give you four of your arms are going to be fixed. You're not going to have to mess with them. They're going to come. Um, you can get you can get non-adjustable versions. The uppers are always going to be adjustable, and you want that to be able to dial in 
caster pinion angle cross caster you, you can you're going to do that that's pretty much the same across all brands clayton evo uh terraflex jks all of them they're pretty much going to handle it the same way the differences are going to be is it solid bar like a rock crawler is it tube with x wall thickness like a metal cloak or a jks what is the uh what's the joint material how do they do the bearings inside is it plastic is it metal you can dive into all of that stuff um i'd say you know the more you're going to off-road the higher end you need if you're not going to off-road it then you know i've i've with put a ton of people in just the jks fixed arm kits that are never going to go off road rides great it's awesome Absolutely. service free more like a it's more like stock plus um terraflex is sport joints sport arms are the same way jks is fixed arms same way those are what i would call stock plus they're not as expensive as an evo a clayton a rock crawler um but if you don't need that that kind of performance then why pay for it if you're going to go off road then then pay for the performance and look at, you know, Evo with the Johnny joints, look at rock crawler, you know, X factor. If you really want to party, um, adventure series, uh, if you're going to wheel, you know, that's, you know, adventure is what's on the four by E and it just got back from Moab. It was up on Pritchett Canyon. It was a mid arm kit. The four by E has a mid arm kit. Cause you can't long arm mm-hmm. those yet. We'll figure something out. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, got a, a big giant battery, battery in the way on that one. <laughs> Ooh, good Lord. It's huge. Um, so that was a, that was an adventure X, <clears throat> um, I don't remember the exact part number. JP and I had a conversation about it before he sent it to me. But that's an event, an adventure series, all eight arms, both track bars. That is a full rock crawler setup, uh, minus the shocks, which I went with, which I went with King. Um, now, having gone off road, I think we're going to play with it a little more and kind of take it to the next level. With we're looking at coilovers. Um, rock crawler's got some new stuff with some fast adjusters coming out, so I think we're going to to go to coilovers, not because I need it. Let me be clear on that. Not because I need it, but I do like to really, I really, really like to go fast and coilover. You just can't beat coilovers for going fast. And it looks cool. I'm not doing it because I'm going to race the four by E let's the four by E will never be what Reaper is ever. It, it will never be that. It can't be that. Um, but some of that was just, so it's you know, not intended to be either. form and function. Um, I'm probably doing it for coilovers on the four by year 50, 50 for me, uh, 50%. It's going to look cool and it's going to be pretty sick. Um, and I haven't seen a four by on coilovers yet. Um, and then the other 50% is, yeah, it'll actually ride better and wheel a little bit better and go cooler off road and all that. It's not my daily driver. It will never be my daily driver. It could be it's on 38. It's not super stupid, uh, but it's not. So I'm going to do a couple little cool things to it. We're going to put PSC on it. We're going to put the coilovers on it. I think I'm going to even take the, uh, the coils off and probably even, maybe even powder coat and blue. I may go full mall crawler, but again, 50, 50, 50% because I think it looks cool and I want it 50% because it will actually give me some performance advantages and some function advantages. So, I mean, I'm right there with everybody else. Like I want stuff that looks cool too. You know, I just, you know, my version of what looks cool, maybe not what some other people looks cool. Like I, I still don't think that a stock vehicle and I don't understand that. I don't understand stock vehicles with 50 ducks on the dash. I still don't understand that, but, Nah, we've already kind of covered that in another episode yeah and i'm Check sure we'll that episode again. for our explanation on the yeah. ducks <laughs> it's just the stock ones man like how yeah. i think these people are actually buying their own ducks caleb i really do you know that wouldn't surprise think about me. it like i drive that four by year round i drove that four by year round for days before it went mm-hmm. for moab before it went to moab and it didn't have graphics on it so it didn't have graphics on it to like i don't know like the day before it loaded up the ship like it was getting graphics on it the night before but it was built, it was done for like a week and a half, two weeks. And I drove it around to get some miles on the gears. So I drove it around. I went to Walmart with it. I went, I, I took it around town. Not one single duck. Now, nobody knew that this was a company vehicle. As far as they knew, looking at it, it was just a built up four by E with some cool blue accents on it. So like to me, and, and ducking is definitely alive and well in central North Carolina. I pass them all the time. So I think, and these guys are driving around in brand new stock vehicles. There is literally in the parking lot that my office is in, right that way, about 50 yards, is a, um, it's a Gobi Gladiator, and it's totally stock, and she drives it to this engineering office that's down the, down the road here, and it's got no less than 25 ducks Oof. in the windshield. I see it every morning, and every morning, it's totally bone stock. 
she's talked to me a couple of times. We've passed. Oh, it's really cool what you guys do. Da, 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 you know, maybe I'll do something. I don't think she actually is because she doesn't want to like have to jump mm-hmm. up into it. She's kind of explained. But there's 25 to 30 ducks across that window. I still don't know how they're secured, but it's bone stock. So I think my theory, and it's growing more and more, I think that people are buying their own ducks and ducking themselves. I um, Mark it down. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that as um, completely infeasible, to be honest with you. Uh, I will say though, I did. Um, I, I think that I did I, participate that in uh, in the ducking. I know this is going to get me shamed. Um, Britt was parked at. I don't know. We got breakfast somewhere. Um, and there was a uh, there was a JK with. It was actually a pretty built up JK with a cool bike rack, a couple really nice mountain bikes on the back, no top. Uh, like it was very well done, and they put a, a white duck on her Jeep, and we just so happened to have a red duck with a bike in her her little basket so on the back happened to and have. yeah so just yeah no, we we put all the ducks in a, in a basket uh, are, like are you coming out as a ducker energy. on this show um uh, but are, are you coming out to me right now no, a, well i guess this does make me a ducker because i have done it now but no it's just it was like hey oh, buddy. Let's the bicycle ducker right she was like I, yeah i was like what? all right i'm just happy that you there. feel comfortable enough on this show and with me and with all of our listeners that you can admit that about yourself and that you can kind of come out to the world <laughs> I can. right here on this podcast to say that you, Caleb Forbes, are a Jeep ducker. So proud of you. So happy for you. I, ha- I have participated. You feel, participated. does that, I mean, do you get that oh, well. weight off your chest? You got to feel really. better now. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can honestly say I still have not yet really in ducking. I've not, I have never ducked a Jeep. Um, I just, I still don't get it. I don't, I mean, I know how it was started. I get all that. I do. I get all that. I get the point of it. I just don't understand just because you like, I don't understand. Like, what if I said that shooting your grill with a BB gun is supposed to make you feel better about your Jeep? Like that to me is like, how does I'm going to put a rubber duck on your Jeep equate to, I want the world to be a happier place. I just, I don't, I just don't see the correlation. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I know. I did, it's I just the correlation thing to me. I want to know. know what was going through that <laughs> lady's head up in Canada. Like that was like, I, I, because the only story is like, it was totally random and she just went and bought ducks and put it on this guy's Jeep at a gas station. And it had, it yeah. had a card or a note or something attached to it that said, just have a nice day. And then that dude saw it, put it on Instagram and he hashtagged it duck, duck Jeep. And it was born like at a gas station in Canada. And then it is spread like wildfire. Things come out of, of weird situations. Always. Right. Yeah. Well, and I don't I don't think it's something we're gonna see die down anytime soon. So I no, uh, I know, think it, it, it might get it relegated to Jeep shows at some point. I don't know that it's gonna keep being a thing uh in the world that we live in of like I'm just gonna go to put a duck on somebody's random Jeep in Walmart. Maybe it does, I don't know. Um it it is now we've got the now we've got the Bronco Ducks now we've got the Moo Moo Subaru with the cows so mm. I don't I don't know if it's hit its I don't even know if it's hit its crescendo yeah. yet we're moving a little far on that but uh, yeah so uh, that is all the questions I have I think we got a little sidetracked on that one we I mean maybe we we'll have another episode did. for ducks we definitely <laughs> want to have an episode on the Carolina squat uh, um, why uh, just to kind of wrap up this one um, if you have jump to correction brackets and you want to do some more things off road. Um, if you want to go stock plus, like you said, JKS, TerraFlex, um, there are a couple other ones out there that do really well. Uh, Rock Crawler Adventure Series is an awesome one. Those are non-adjustable. They work great. Um, if you want to go a little more hardcore, you get adjustable eight control arms. Um, so, yeah. And uh, we definitely appreciate all the questions that came in, even the hater aid ones. Uh, if you've got questions, even or if you disagree with us, comment below. Uh, we would love to see the comments. We try to be respectful and answer your questions. Yeah, or... Uh, respectfully disagree with you but either way we love the content we love the comments and uh don't forget we did announce this earlier in the week we do have a new shirt uh this one's going out for pre-order first to our listeners i'm not going to post this anywhere on the social media channels uh that can be found at the outlaw slash merch uh it is our new spotter t-shirt um as of wednesday this shirt is live. We are taking pre-orders. So get your pre-order in. And um, that is my spiel. And I will let Doug close this out. The last thing I would say to the guy on the control arms, there's absolutely, there's, he commented on that post on that video. It was actually on the Outlaw Off-Road page. 
there is another video um, during the season, season one of Let's Get After It, that I think is actually titled, Do You Need All Eight Control Arms? Um, where I go in pretty in depth for several minutes talking about the difference between two arms, four arms, eight arms. Um, so I would say also go back and watch that video about the reasons behind two arms, four arms, and eight arms. Uh, six arms isn't a thing. Um, so go back and watch that video if you're interested in why you would need two, four, or eight, what's the benefits, what's the drawbacks, all that kind of stuff, how to do it, stage it out. So check that episode out, uh, the All Eight Control Arms episode on the Outlaw Off-Road page uh, in the Let's Get After It series. Those are, you know, short, you know, seven to 12 minute videos, like eight to 10 minute videos where we kind of pick the topic and just kind of just, it was just me and a camera and I talked about it. Um, so those are, those are pretty, that one would be pretty helpful. So I would tell him to go check that out. Um, other than that, I will echo Caleb and just say thank you to all the listeners uh, for spending the time with us and checking us out. Um, we do release the full episodes every Wednesday. That last episode on Wednesday is when we released the spotter t-shirt. Pretty freaking cool. Pretty awesome t-shirt. Looking forward to getting mine. Uh, we do have the pre-order open for that. We do expect everyone to have the pre-order. Uh, we'll close that out here in the next couple weeks, and everybody, those shirts will ship by the end of the month of June. We are here uh, the first week of June for this episode. Those will be closed out, printed, and shipped in that first pre-order by the end of this month. Uh, and we've also got some other merch coming down the line for 4th of July. We've got the trail brush shirt, which we've talked about a little bit. So we've got some more stuff um, coming down the road branded with Outlaw Off-Road. We do use that Outlaw Off-Road for all of the merch. Um, so you'll see those logos on there. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're going to wrap that up here for this Friday's mailbag episode. Appreciate you guys submitting the comments, submitting the questions, um, even the ones who want to question us a little bit. I love it. I love it. Drink some Haterade, make some comments, get a little happy with your keyboard warrior selves. I love it. I got no problems with it. Keep it coming. Keep it rocking. Uh, wherever you're finding us, make sure you like, comment, subscribe uh, on YouTube. Make sure you get that notification icon so you know when the videos are coming out. That is where we will leave it for this Friday. Everybody go out, enjoy your weekend, get outdoors, get on a trail, go park your Jeep on a target ball. Uh, for legal reasons, that is a joke. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> and we will see you on the next episode of Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.